Republican Congressman Mark Sanford of South Carolina. Congressman Sanford, welcome to the show, sir. Pleasure. Thank you much. Uh, you, Happy you, New Year. I, I am jealous of the fact that you're in Charleston. Uh, the lovely backdrop there uh, it is always very nice. Let me ask you, you've, you've heard this um, issue, this report about how the president referred to some of these countries that we give temporary protection status to and, and his, I guess, wishing that it, they would, this, these immigrants would come from countries like Norway instead of S-hole countries. Um, your reaction? Uh, yeah, I, 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 you're catching me relatively flat-footed. I just I flew down from D.C. and we were busy with the FISA, uh, the FISA vote this morning. And so, you know, it, it is what it is. And there, there have been some crazy tweets and some crazy quotes. And I just stack it up. It, it is what it is. Well, let me ask you this, though. I, DACA has been hard mm -hmm. enough without all this. Does how much harder does the president's inappropriate comments make it to get an, to get an agreement that doesn't shut down the government? You know, I, I, I don't think coarse comments one way or the other are going to drive the DACA debate. I mean, I think that there's fundamentally a big divide right now in the Congress with a lot of conservatives saying, OK, let's not create another DACA down the road. And we've got to have some measure of border security that goes with any kind of DACA uh, fix or DACA mm -hmm. solution. And that's sort of fixed camp, if you will, over on the Republican side. And there's an equally fixed camp on the Democratic side with folks saying, look, these kids came through, you know, the whole story, uh, mm -hmm. of their, they're not of their own volition. Uh, let's not hold them hostage to what might or might not happen next on border security. Those two camps are fairly entrenched, which, to your point, raises this larger question of how in the world do we get all this solved with a larger budget deal come next week? It did seem as if I saw a compromise floated that seemed to be the true half a loaf measure, you get some Democratic votes for more border fencing, um, some 700 miles. Mm -hmm. You'd get the DACA protections. Parents would be allowed to stay, but they would not be eligible for citizenship. The lottery program goes away, but the temporary protection status folks would get priority. I, what I've outlined, is that something you could vote for? I don't know. You know, there's a more comprehensive bill that, you know, McCall and others have just introduced uh, that's sort of hot off the press. I would probably be more in that camp. It's Fair a enough. little bit more robust, if you will. Um, I'd probably be more in that camp. Uh, but are, it, what I described, is that feasible? Just your way of reading that that can get through the House and the Senate? And let me ask you this. Can the hat will... Paul Ryan put a bill on the floor if more Democrats support it than Republicans when it comes to this DACA compromise. Uh, I probably not would be my guess. Uh, they call it the Hastert rule, and basically it says if you're in the majority, um, at least on the Republican side, uh, they don't really want to move a bill through that. You know, that's not, a, have a majority that's not an official support. rule. You know, it's not an official rule. It's totally. just sort of right. No, no, it no, is, no. But I'm just yeah. saying it's a tradition, a, a well-worn tradition, if you will. Right. And so I, for that reason, I doubt he would. But uh, again, you're reading the tea leaves as well as I am in terms of what comes next over the next 10 days. Let me ask you about FISA and that chaos from this morning. Um, now, obviously, we've mm -hmm. been discussing the DACA chaos, which you missed, I think, on your plane. You were there for FISA. Right. How much did the president's tweet almost undo the entire compromise bill? Uh, I, 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 it had folks a tither, um, but I, again, I was in the other camp. I'm in the pro Amash, uh, right. Zoe Lofgren Zoe Lofgren, camp. right? Uh, yeah, right. That, that would say let, let, let's let's uh, let, let's beef up some of the civil liberties and some of the protections within what's called the 702 provision of the larger FISA debate. And so, so you know, the, the, the initial smoke signal that said, you know, there, this may have had something to do with something that I didn't like, in as much as that create confusion, you know, I, I don't know that I was that much against it, given I, I, I think it is a mistake to proceed as we did today. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what happens over on the Senate side. But I think that the Fourth Amendment is fundamental to this larger notion of liberty and there being a, a limit to how far government can reach into your personal effects without a warrant and without probable cause. I think that what we move forward today, though I, again, admire the chairman tremendously in what he was trying to do in terms of balancing this, uh, went a bit far uh, in codifying this notion of government's ability to reach into your personal effects without a warrant and without probable cause. So you feel that that's still, American citizens are still more 
uh, at risk on this, even though everything's supposed to be about its foreign individuals? No, but, but that's not how it works. So in these drag nets, if you will, in, where in your, you're querying a foreign phone number, they mm. talk to somebody in L.A. or they talk to somebody who may be in London, but who may be an American citizen. The question then was, what do you do with that data? And right now, it goes into a large database, and without, a again, a warrant, they can go, in essence, check into those other queries. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as, as one who's fairly strictly reading the Constitution, and I get it that today we represent a lot of different views on what the Constitution <laughs> means or looks like, um, I think that, it, you know, that we went too far that you ought to have a warrant and probable cause to go into that to, to that bundle. Because if you remember, the Fourth Amendment was fundamentally about, you know, the founding fathers' disdain right. for British soldiers coming through, looking through your house till they finally found something they could charge you with. Right. They put that Fourth Amendment for a reason. I think civil liberty is vital to the larger notion of liberty. All right, I'm going to finally ask you, I, I pointed out the beautiful backdrop you have there. You. Uh, were you have you're not happy about this decision about offshore oil drilling? I know that, uh, and you you made a, a bit of a, a snide comment, I think, or or or, or a, a little tweak at the president when you said uh, you don't want to see oil rigs off the coast of Mar-a-Lago, and there's a lot of people in Myrtle Beach that don't want the same as well. You are a governor. What's in your toolbox as governor to fight the federal government on this issue? If you're the governor, if if, if you know for the governor of South Carolina for Henry McMaster. Well, I begin with personal relationships. I mean, I think that a lot of people argue that this is largely a, a decision based on politics and not policy. If it was based on what, uh, again, the secretary had suggested, which is, well, you know, Florida is heavily tourism reliant. Well, guess what? Look at the coast of South Carolina. We're heavily tourism reliant. And so it, 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 it's based on something more than just policy. There's some politics and some personal relationships that go into this. And I think that Henry McMaster, as governor of South Carolina, has a clear personal tie to the president that I hope that he would exploit in any way possible in terms of trying to protect our coastal waters right. and the tourism business that, that comes with it. But in fairness, while that might help South Carolina in the short term, is that any way to govern that it's all based on who your pals with on whether there's an oil rig on, on your coastline? So because there's a Democratic governor of Virginia, he wants, I'm sure nobody in Virginia Beach wants to see an oil rig <laughs> either. I, I assume you're not endorsing that style of governance. No, 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 no. We don't have a king or a despot, and we all, you know, lay homage to the king or to the despot. Uh, we want to have a, a, a system of policies, of, of, as the founding fathers put it, a law and not men. And, and so I, I, I think that whatever you do, you ought to do on a consistent basis. And that's what was so telling about the Florida decision. If you're going to apply that logic to Florida, right. then you ought to apply it to a whole host of other states as well. Yeah, well, I have a feeling. We're not going to see many oil rigs. This, this is one that I feel like uh, the toothpaste might actually get put back in the tube. We shall see. Congressman Mark Sanford, it's always, sir. Thanks for coming on and sharing My your pleasure. views. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.